What's up, EF? I'm Troy Casey, as you probably already know by now, but I'm here to talk to you about the beers that we're going to be releasing next week for the February beer release, and I'm pumped out of it. We've got five awesome, unique, and distinct beers here. Let's get started. First up, we've got Undertone Preserves with blackberries and black raspberries. This is our oated, our oat farmhouse ale with these uh, black raspberries and blackberries. The black raspberries coming from the Pacific Northwest and the blackberries coming from the hot shift area. If you were a member from, uh, from last year or a new member that didn't get last year's Supreme clientele, you're gonna wanna jump on this one. It's got as much fruit as Supreme clientele, just with a little bit different base here. Um, so we're, I'm pumped on this. I just love the clarity, the complexity. It's just, I mean, it's just rich. Like it just smells like, it's just, it's just fruit. It's all fruit in the nose. Decadent. It smells sweet. You can't smell sweet, but this beer it smells sweet. It's clean. It's it's thick. Um, it's it's an amazing fruited decadent dessert beer. I mean, if there's uh, ever been a dessert beer that we made, that's the one. Up next, we have a beer from 2020. Merlot Grape Funky Blender Preserves. As you might have known by now, we did not get any uh, grapes in 2021 because of a frost here in Colorado. And this is one of the uh, uh, grape beers that we've been saving from 2020. So this is with uh, Merlot Grapes of about four pounds per gallon, the Funky Blender base beer that we've been sitting on for over a year now. In the nose, it's just that classic um, in my opinion, like really, I love, my favorite, my favorite grape in Colorado is, is Merlot. That's why we use it for Crusher. That's why I use it for so many things. Um, and this is no exception. So it's really intense, great character on the nose, but it's really clean. And having rested a year already in the bottles, super smooth. Really delicate. It's, it's kind of rare for us that we release a beer that long, but we've been holding on to these great beers from the 2020 harvest just because we knew we weren't going to have any from 2021. So this is a fun one to do for sure. It's a really small blend. Yeah, I like this one. This little gushing baby right here is Pluot Ghost or Pluot uh, Ghost Note with Larota Plums. I love me some plum beers. Um, it just tastes like candy. Ghost Note being our stealth farmhouse ale with the Larota plums that we get from Palisade from a little grower called Juicy Acres in Palisade. Uh, I can't get enough of these. We haven't used these in a few years now, if I remember correctly. Um, and this beer is just tasting amazing. Just candy in the nose. I can't, I can't say that enough. It just tastes like straight plum candy. It smells like straight plum candy in the nose. And it just tastes like you're biting into a, a juicy plum, with the but with the body, the, the, the easily um, uh, perceived body from that spelt that we get in this beer. I think that's a I mean, the spelt in these sour beers is just a home run in my opinion. So I'm a big fan of this one. The next stone fruit beer we have is Fruit Stand Africa. We've had this on tap a few times at the cellar for various EF events. Um, we had it on tap a couple weeks ago for uh, our first vintage experience. Um, and this was one of the first beers that I uh, that we did from the 2021 Apricot Harvest. And what I love so much about this, as I do all the other Apricot beers we did last year, is how soft the acidity is. It's still intense Apricot in the nose with the complexity of the Saison base, but the Apricot acidity is super smooth and refined. Like, I, oh man, if I, could, if I could just live in 2021 apricot, uh, um, I'll get there, one second. In the 2021 apricot smoothness of the acidity, I would. I would never go back. This is, this is perfect for me. It might be one of the least acidic beers that we have right here. I mean, it's, it's so, so good, so juicy. I love avocados and I hope you do as well. Last but not least, we have Cherry Rosé. So we have our salad, Sour Balaton Cherry Rosé. So we got these uh, Balaton cherries from Utah this year. 
And uh, then we did the rosé, which is when we re-ferment more beer on top of the first used fruit. Um, it's got nice little, I mean, perfect color for like what the rosé should be. Uh, and in the nose, it's almost mostly uh, the Cezanne base beer, um, the different farmhouse base beer that we used. So this is a really subtle cherry characteristic, really what we were looking for with this. A little bit of cherry, mostly the base beer that we were going for with this one, but still with the complexity of the, um, the cherries. It is assertively tart, not like not sour, but assertively tart, incredibly drinkable. Um, it's the epitome of what we're looking for in, in these rosé beers. Hope you are all having a great January. Can't wait for another February and see everybody soon. Cheers again.